So in my beginner's tutorial, one of the first steps that I showed you to do was to crop out the stacking artifacts around the edges of the image once you were done running the OSC pre-processing script. Uh, there's some other options available for cropping. I just want to go over those with you guys, and it can also be used when you're done post-processing, so you can crop out your image to a nicer format before you post it to social media, or maybe you want to make it the wallpaper on your phone. Uh, once we go through the cropping stuff, and there's not a lot to it, just wanted to point things out for you. But once we're done with that, we'll show you real quick how you can pan and zoom around in your image as you're working on it. Sometimes you need to zoom in on the stars and take a closer look at them. You want to look at the noise that you have on the image. Uh, just show you how to move around, some basic functionality of the tool. So, enough talking. Let's get started. My name is Rich. This is Deep Space Astro. Okay, time of recording, I'm using serial version 1.0.6. I have already stacked the Rosette Nebula, so I'm just going to come over to the open button and open up the result.fit. And as you can see, we're in a linear state right now, so we see some stars, but for the most part it's black. So we're going to come down to linear and hit auto stretch. Lots of green, that's normal. Um, in previous video, I showed you guys how to just do a quick crop. Uh, we're going to go a little bit more. It's not advanced, but there are additional options that you can use when you're trying to crop out your image and even get to your final framing that you desire. So just like everything else in Cyril, you can't work when you're on the RGB layer. If you click when you are, it'll tell you that you need to be over on the red, green, or blue channel. So we'll jump over on the blue for this demonstration. And... Our little crosshairs here, if we just wanted to crop out, because like I said in the previous video, after stacking, we will al almost always have some artifacts along the border here. And you can really see them if you change this auto stretch to histogram. You'll generally see them pop out even more around the edges. So we're going to go back into auto stretch, though. Uh, the first way, as I shown before, is just to kind of freehand left mouse button click in one of the corners. And we'll drag it over, let go of the left mouse button, right click, and then crop. And it takes out all those artifacts for us. The additional ways that you can do this is you can just randomly draw a square somewhere on your image, right click, and if you come down to selection, you can see we're in free ratio right now. And there's a handful of options you can use. They'll probably be pretty straightforward, but we'll go through a few of them here. Um, preserve ratio will do just that. Whatever the ratio is of your current image, it'll maintain that for you. So if I try to drag the right side of this out, you'll see the bottom side is going along with it. Same thing if we do the top, it's going to grab the right. So it, it will always preserve that ratio for you if that's what you want to end up with. The other options are 16 by 9. If you watch the box I have drawn around as I click this, you can see that changed to 16 by 9. If you right click and do 3 by 2, 4 thirds, I think you kind of get the idea. Something like 2 thirds is a nice framing for a mobile phone, possibly. And again, any of these that you select will maintain their ratios. The other thing you can do is if you come down, right click, selection, and we're on no guides right now, if I select center lines, as I'm drawing my box, you can see where the center lines are at. As I'm moving my box, just by holding my left mouse button down and moving the selection around, I have a nice center point reference to use. Rule of thirds, actually let's go back, we'll do, this one here. So if we go back to selection again and say rule of thirds, then you get a three by three grid. Similar to the rule of thirds, we have the rule of fifths. So now we have a five by five grid. So just, just different ways to help you frame things up for your crop. Nothing earth shattering. Like I said, I did not cover this in my last video because it was just a, a simple get you going for beginners. But want to touch base on this one again so you can see you have more options available to you. So those are the cropping features. We're going to undo what we have done here with that previous crop. And let's talk a little bit about zooming. 
down here in the bottom, currently we are in the fit to window state. If you hit the button with the number one on there, it'll bring it to its normal size, so a full one to one value. And if you hold your control key down on Windows and left mouse button press and hold, then you can pan around in your image. We want to go back to a fit view. We'll hit the button down here on the bottom. It says fit the image to the window. And then your minus and plus buttons, if you hit the minus, that'll zoom out. And the plus button, as expected, will zoom in for you. You can also hold your control key button down and spin your mouse wheel to zoom in and out of the image. Wherever you have your crosshairs placed is where that zoom will take effect. So it's actually pulling it towards you from that point. You go to the center of the nebula and see how that behaves that way. So, and that's it for the zoom features. And then the final thing I wanted to show you were these four buttons right down here. This first one here will rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise when we click on it. And it'll keep doing the same thing over and over again each time you click it until you get back around to your original orientation. Second button, same thing, 90 degrees, just in the opposite direction, right? So we can go back and forth using those. These two here, the first one will give you a horizontal mirror. And this one will give you a vertical mirror. Well, I hope that was useful for everybody. I know it's not much, but sometimes it's the little things that help you move around a little bit easier when you're working on stuff. So, appreciate everyone's time. I plan on putting out more videos to get a little bit more in depth on some of the features and functions that we use in the beginner's tutorial. So, if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Give the video a like. Leave a comment. Appreciate everybody's time. See you in the next video. And clear skies.